Um, how strict is it then to get them the way they were? Because um, in talking about how everything you were just talking about, that kind of um, how from songman to songman, um, the uh, the performances change a little bit. Mm. Um, well, it was interesting listening to uh, what you were saying about how um, you know in the last two hundred years, and even in the last sort of so sort of maybe fifty years or so, um, the loss of those cultures and the destruction of that culture. Um, if it can be kind of kept alive, does that become part of the story of that story? Yeah. 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 I mean, and. It's not to say that it's all about just, you know, um, maintaining 100, 200, 500 thousand year old traditions and stories. I've been, you know, part of that creation ceremony that we did in Bathurst, we had a couple of little other stories thrown in, mm. one of which was the bombing of Darwin. Yeah, so yeah. because the mob on Tiwi Islands and Bathurst were also not only um, recruited on, in Darwin, but from the islands themselves, they had first watch. So they were put on watch and radioing into Darwin to go, the Japanese are coming. Yeah, yeah. So there's a dance about that. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there, there are funny dances in Central Desert yeah. that are devoted to the Green Can, BB, you know, <laughs> which are clowning, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think I, uh, we were talking about this, I feel like, a couple of years ago, and you were telling me, I think anyway, you were telling me about how um, it might even have been that story, the Darwin story, and how even contemporary, relatively contemporary events get folded into mm. the, um, the performances and the songs and the dances, which are the verbal history. Yeah. So that we have this kind of notion of um, Australian theatre only starting in 1950. Mm -hmm. um, and... <laughs> having erased 150 years worth of our own history here, mm. much less everything else. Mm. Um, See, because our mob were real big in vaudeville. Yeah, yeah. Like, I we was had a whole vaudeville this. tradition. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of our elders at the, the festival, she came in very proudly a um, couple of months back before we put the festival on, and she went, here's the photos I was talking about of her in the full splits in mm. front of the other um, Kamragunja dancers, the players. So, and they used to put on, you know, and that's from the, what, 1920s or 1930s, yeah. those photos were taken. And so the Kamragunja players were, you know, they had a dancing troupe, they had a choir, they had um, uh, a vaudevillian troupe. They would put on benefit concerts, particularly around wartime, to raise money to be sent to the Red Cross. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've, we've had a long history of, uh, of blackfellas in vaudeville. You know, I don't know whether you call this, you know, part of the Australian performing, performance canon, but, you know, particularly Aboriginal men made a very good living putting on boxing matches. Oh, yeah. Which were a form of entertainment, yeah, particularly yeah. around, you know, World War II. Yeah. Um, so you had a shitload of men making names for themselves as professional boxers that yeah. were entertainment um you've had you know singers dancers all kinds mm. of we've had a long history of being engaged in in what was then contemporary art yeah yeah or contemporary performance you know my auntie for for instance was on you know went on tour with the sapphire she was a go-go dancer yeah yeah used to work with the lay girls in sydney and and at the Whiskey A Go-Go and all of that kind of stuff. And then when that opportunity came, went on tour as a go-go dancer and back up on Vietnam tours. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are many stories around the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you also did have the, um, the tours. Like one of our performers, Jack Shepard, who did a performance during Yurimboy, it was our, during Barringanabal with the citywide takeover. He did... Um, this silent walk through the city, the three men chained themselves up by the neck uh -huh. and walked through the city in honour of the men from his nations up near Cape York and around that peninsula where, oh, when was it? Early 1800s? Mm -hmm. There were men, mainly men, that were nabbed from different tribes from around that region, chucked into a troop, mm and then toured down the east coast. Mm. So they were chucked in, and this is where you see um, the lap lap come into play. So you know how when you see now Aboriginal dance 
or performance, you know, welcome to country yeah. or public ceremony, you'll see people wearing lap laps, which it's is usually man. the red naga. Yeah. Da 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 da. Nice little piece of Christian cover up. Ah. So for those tours, they would be covered up, they would have to paint up, and then they would have to perform yeah, for yeah. the white people down, <clears throat> down the coast until, in this particular story, they were dumped here in Melbourne and then had to busk their way back up home. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got this, you've got the, the, um, the curiosity shows. So mob were rounded up and put in zoos in France and England. So yeah. we became curiosities. We yeah. became living museum pieces yeah. for the Europeans. Um, and does that happen to the performance as well? Become because I, I get a sense of well, the interesting thing that uh, with that story, and that's just one of many kind of mobs being chained up, taken down the coast, and made to perform, perform, perform. Yeah. So where I start to think of where's the recordings of this? Because what would they be performing? Because they're all from different mob. They all have different lines and mm. and song cycles and stories. Maybe some of them are connected because you do get that. Um, you know, like we have a, a, you know, there's a dingo story that connects us to right through the centre of Australia up to Mornington Island, and each one has a piece of that big yarn. Yeah. Um, That's incredible, actually, that notion of, so um, uh, it's the one big story, but each um, mm. community has their own piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, do they come together to tell that story, the whole I've story? I've never heard of that, Be because that's, a, that's like from, you know, around Port Victoria, Adelaide-ish, all the way to the tip of um, of Queensland, yeah, you know, yeah. between Queensland and, and Darwin. That's a lot of country to cover and a lot of mob. Yeah, but sure. it's, yeah, I've, I've never heard of that expanse of nations being brought together. Yeah, yeah. But it kind of explains why you can find language that is you know, language that is in use in Victoria, that is in use in South Australia, and again in, in WA, kind of explains, you know, that um, those thread of stories mm. where you have shared languages or shared um, form, you know, dance, reflected in a dance step or yeah, a yeah. rhythm or a... Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously... A, 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 um a very kind of personal form as well, right? Like it, there's a, a great deal of individual contribution to the form, mm. etc. Um, That's also how you see the the form evolve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you will you will get instructed in how to do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the jaw sets hard on that. Because <laughs> then all people are hard. They're hard teachers, hard taskmasters. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, and if you don't do it right, you know, look out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, within that, once you once you've gained the confidence of the song man or song woman, when you and you start feeling comfortable within that, you'll see someone bust out, and then all of a sudden, that's a new deadly move to try and do. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Mm. It's fascinating. It keeps reminding me of so many different cultures, like um, the kind of long. To kind of term traditions and the like the old folks that you're talking about reminds me of kind of ancient Japanese um, performance traditions and yet the kind of um, busting out the new move thing reminds me of uh, like street dance and um, like contemporary street dances. Yeah, I was a, um, a part of an amazing experience. There was 2011 at VCA, I was asked in to, to organise and run a choreographic laboratory and so I ended up bringing the mob that I was working with in Lockhart River mm -hmm. down so they would come to Melbourne one of the last trips that they had in Melbourne on that residency was that um, old man had said I've got this old I've got this old crocodile song and we want to revive it like he hadn't seen anyone perform it. He remembered the song, but he hadn't seen anyone perform it for 80 years. Ah. And so what he wanted to do in that residency over there in, in the dance studio, he said, I want to revive it and we want to make it a new dance for Mob to do from here on in. Mm -hmm. So it was this old song he sang and 
myself. There were three other choreographers that I brought in, three other contemporary Indigenous choreographers. There was myself, um, Tammy Butterworth, Maria Randall and Dion Hasty in the room. Mm -hmm. And he went, well, you four are here, you can help us. And then the dance troupe. So we spent a whole day creating what they ended up calling the Melbourne Crocodile Dance. Mm. And it was really interesting. It was really interesting in, in, in how, that, how that dance came, came together. Mm. Because Old Man had images that he wanted to recreate, but he also had invested enough trust in the room with the other the bodies in the room to go, what do you think? Mm. How could we do that better? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was oh, it was amazing. Mm. It's, it's very like kind of contemporary rehearsal practice as well as where you come in with um, here's my new script. I'm a young playwright. Blah 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 blah. And then everybody comes together to go. Well, we make this thing together because yeah. it's not just the story and it's not just the text. Yeah. Um, that kind of collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, how, how, uh, as, as much as from nation to nation and from community to community um, there are differences, how local is that sort of sense of performance? Is it like, this is for us or do other people come or...? Well, like I said, there, you know, there are ceremonies for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, here, for example, in Melbourne, you have a uh, Tanderum opening Melbourne Festival yeah. every year for the past five years, which is the revival of an old ceremony that hasn't, hadn't been done for, what was that, 150 something, 170 something years? Um, yeah, which brought the five, you know, closer clans, because there are 29 clans in the Kulin, mm. the five that are within that Melbourne and surrounds, mm you've got those five major clan groups, which was, um, and that specifically was to do business. It was to trade, mm -hmm. you know, the point of Tanderam or Nagi, um, you know, it was to trade and whether that be um, resources, uh, there were also kin, kinship ties made mm -hmm. through marriage, um, you had lots of debate, there were lots of business to get on. Mm. And then also you had the dance, you had feasting, you had all of that. Mm -hmm. Like it's used for many different reasons. It almost kind of is, it's, I mean, this is me up from the outside, but it sounds kind of like um, performance contextualizes everyday life. Well, that's what it is, yeah, art yeah. is life. You Well, yeah. You know, you don't, because everything yeah. yeah, it's yeah. as simple as that. Art is life. You yeah, don't yeah. have one, you don't have art without it. You know, every song, every dance, every story, every painting comes from, you know, the river that sustains you, the tree that provides for you, yeah. the earth that protects you, the air that you breathe, the sky that surrounds you, the stars that lead you, you know, and how you as an individual, as an individual within the community, as a, as a part of a clan system. All of that is all interconnected. You don't have one without the other, yeah, yeah. which is a very different... Um, so when you look at how we've divided, you know, visual art, yeah. dance, um, music, yeah. theatre, it's everyone's all kind of siloed off and this whole bloody thing over the past however many years or oh well this post-traumatic theatre but then we've now got this revival of transdisciplinary interdisciplinary whatever whatever it's like oh, it's not that exotic or new mate yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. it's all it's just ancient art. yeah yeah <laughs>